But anyway, folks, it's been tons of information in tonight, and then we'll have our central standard time. You look down here to the right when we go back in the deal. We got a 5.8, it's the freshest there, but we're going to click. Now, yeah, maybe we get something else, but I think that's it. And I'll hit it again. And yeah, that seems to be the freshest quake on South America. So let's get out of here. So basically, uh, I know it's basically a Quantico uh, SOS ISO news agency, pretty much. So, but anyway, they at least they give us the truth of what's going on. That's why I say you got to watch all different news because basically we've got uh, rioting, rioting over in. Uh, in Spain. So this is fresh from that agency. Like I say, Quantico, ISO, SOS, OSS, doesn't really matter. Keep the world spinning. So anyway, I heard rumors out there about basically there's going to be a uh, Something like a minimum, you uh, have to basically buy four gallons of gasoline when you go. It seems to be there's so many people out of work in the United States that basically, uh, I don't know if they're jumping the gun, it's just something that's going through the grapevine. Uh, so anyway, a lot of people watch this. A lot of this going on. Yeah. So then they turn around and uh, beat up uh, private and public sector property, cities, and their municipality police going to get a hold of you. So, riots in Spain. We're at JPL, and basically Earth is right underneath this, and it's basically 2012 TV, and it's pretty darn close to us. Uh, it basically is on the uh, space weathers. They have it on their list down at the bottom. And they're talking about it there. And also, got the Draconoid Meteor. And basically, you'll see that because I gave you a fireball. Uh, we've had some wild CMEs that are very large, but they're not hitting the C scale and above. They're large and huge. And what I like, I've called them. And basically, there's a bunch of stuff that came up out of the water. And a guy got a great auroral shot. And... Uh, Mr. Frank Olson again, pretty sure more than likely I shooting from Norway, gets this dramatic shot there because basically plankton or whatever this comes up and basically they got the name of it. You can go look at, see what that products are that come up out of the ocean naturally. And then the idea you got that, that rainbow at night over there we got. And then we come down here and we have our 2000 TV. Now remember this one here, this TC4 is closer. I'll pop that in next, but we go to JPL and you see how many are you the way it is and basically it's at an all-time closeness to earth okay because if i go down to the data down on the bottom you're going to see that basically on the minimum you don't even see anything close to that low so this is as close as this doggone thing is going to be around to earth in freaking anybody's lifetime so newborn you're missing it and you're missing all this stuff that the nasa doesn't tell you and they should be telling you to go out and take a nice look at it because 2012 TV, that's as close as it's ever going to get to Earth. You should be able to see it. So basically, you want to watch Fireball, and I'll try to get some into that in tonight, too. Let's go ahead and pop that other one in. Now, you have problems trying to get the information on the Dracone Meteor, but if you back it up, you'll be able to see Space Weather talked about it. Now, this is the parent object of it. So basically, that is... It was discovered in 1900, and basically, there is your IU that that is out. So basically, the object that I showed you on Fireball that is basically the... Uh, father piece of that's we, the best thing we can do for getting a distance for that right now out in space so let's we'll punch in that other object and we'll play with the gram here a little bit so you can see what's going on out there in space okay and remember sun's in the hole there's sun right there okay and then so that is the earth rare underneath 2012 tv4 folks you can barely see it but it's the earth is right underneath there it's the green spot and it's the green writing back there. Okay, so. And really quick, though, they did have this at code 6. So basically, that's a close to hit 
and as you see a lot closer are you than what okay central standard time down there in the right corner you'll already see my time and everything like that's how we sit right now and then that's why the meatball is out here in the back end but if you're interested in Neptune you should be able to see those videos I uploaded those and then we got the th closest thing into the sun right now in the well is mercury and let's go ahead and put in uh, the distance we'll put in this closest are uh, you here that it actually now when I put in that it's 623,000 miles and then basically come down here it's 2.6 times the mean basically the distance for the moon earth distance okay 2.6 it's almost three times the distance and then you get the corresponding main sequence star properties okay 6600k so basically this is up within the distance of circular stereo play and it might be right in it in the main sequence too but the idea that that's there's an object up there that's 1.3 mass the size of the sun that's basically burning at 6600k that's in basically a circular stereo distance of that 623 miles 623,000 miles all right so let's take a look at 212 tc4 quickest thing i see right off the bat it's just got a closer condition it's got it six put the diagram in we'll also go down and we'll get the coordinates the close approach data immediately look at the uh, minimum distance and we see the lowest number you're pretty much seeing is this here number here which is basically closer than our IU that we had in the last distance so I'll compute that there you go so those two objects are close so we're kind of crowded around right now with all this stuff going on because basically we've got uh, the Sun going a poop because of this this year's CME action going on and I'm also gonna play some uh, that was basically more than likely that was mercury down there that popped in for a second so if you back up the tape, that's what you'll see is Mercury there. Huge CM to E. And you've seen the date. There you go. Okay, and then I'll X out of this. That was that video there. We got this one here. Enlarge this one and basically So we got all that action going on out in space. And what I want to show you is this here video here that we did last night, or actually Sunday afternoon. We have a huge comet that hits the sun. You're going to see the seventh pop in, and you're going to see a huge comet hit the sun. That action there, more from Draconius, more than likely, or the supergiants. And then a whammo, you get a huge comet that hits the sun. Huge comet. This might be part of Draconius. It doesn't really matter. It hits the sun in its history. And here it comes, whammo. Watch. Bam. Boom. Puffo. Okay. And we also they have information of water on Vesta, and remember you've seen them have a better shot of of animation of this flipping around. It basically looks like a meteor that's got moisture hit Vesta before, so that's what it more than likely has that moisture on that. So, and also I got a meteor that basically looped around the Earth. Now you might have a hard time getting information on Draconius because the idea here is all the asteroids that are supposed to be showering around. But make sure you watch uh, Space Weather because it shows you up here the description of it. Okay, there's there's your description on it, and then basically this is the parent object of it. That's your parent object of Draconius. Okay, because this is the father object of parent object mother father objects of draconius meteor shower okay so we're going to give your your distance on that all you on this and basically that's tc4 there sun in the middle of the well 
Mercury there, and that's basically what you've seen in the Mercury with the Sun there a few minutes ago. Basically, this is just views here. You got Jupiter there. Okay. So that's how we sit out there. And let's go ahead and give you. There's your list of meteors, showers. So dramatically, this is the one that more to be talking about than what Space Weather was talking about, because this is the one that will be between uh, the Earth and the Moon, because it's going to only be 58,600 miles, okay? 58,600 miles, folks, okay? This is just a hundredth of miles, okay? 58,600 miles away is that all you distance of your object right here. 2012 TC4, okay? okay? So it'll be interesting what it does do because basically that's what it's sitting at current and basically the moon and earth distance is only 248 miles, 248,000, sorry, 197, folks. So it'd be interesting to see where that uh, object here, TC12, TC412, ends up because right now it's only sitting out at that or basically the actual factual is that's the minimum, the minimum, minimum, October 12th, okay, distance there. So it's going to be interesting to see what it does. Does it go between the moon and boom, or is it, you know, it's pretty close. See what kind of magnetical pull draw it gets, okay. Speaking of that, we'll go ahead and see what we got for quakes right now. Now, the sun is pretty much wanting to do a C, and you, that's what pretty much you'll get for information and everything when you go to any of your data that you'll try to receive, solar art and so forth and so on, anything NASA and everything like that. But I don't really think it's hitting a C yet, but it's going to be wanting to, and that's what Space Weather is telling you. Okay, this is uploading now, too, so you'll, this video will be up before the video that I'm making right now. Okay, you want to check this out. This is great stuff on the meatball. And basically, go over here to the data on uh, Fireball, and we'll go into Fireball. And I believe that this is an object that, yes, uh, another, you know, less than the distance of the sun. Basically, a little bit over two-thirds the distance of Earth and sun, basically, we had an object there. And we'll go back to Fireball to see tonight what we got going on. This was from the 6th. This was from what I already had on video, so... So you watch my other video and basically let me show you that one but let's let's flop up through here through the info too and basically that's Huntsville tonight live and we'll go up here and we'll plop this map get this to come up and that's for your live shots tonight showing much you basically want to be up about one o'clock central standard time and you get a good view of what's going on in fireball So Sunday night, if you're smart enough to get up and watch it about one central standard, I mean actually one eastern standard time, uh, formal hot, you should be able to see a super giant possibly with along with Draconius. So go watch uh, this video. Basically what I do here folks is I zoom in and I show you the mass that we've got up here beside the sun that you're seeing down at Nehemiah Station. And that's your mass that you're seeing. When you see a Nehemiah Station and that's your crown, and let me back that up just a little bit. And basically, this is fresh footage pretty much off of Sechi and Soho and Healy Viewer. And basically, this is that crown. And basically, one side is bluish. And remember, blue is the hotter side that you end up seeing when it's flopping around. And basically, the red will be the cooler side. Okay. And that's pretty much our object that we see in front of the sun down there at Nehemiah Station. Okay. So that's your object. And that's what. Uh, let's see how huge the sun is here. This is the outline of the sun right here. And then the idea of how huge this object is. And basically the actual factual that that is a basically becoming a remnant <coughs> in our turn of stereo play in space right now because the idea that it's very close to the sun. So for a real good view of all this stuff that was on the 6th, and basically number one, this here, you go to this video here. 
You go ahead and check check this video here out, folks. It'll give you all that 